Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to your 2019 six-month forecast. Thank you so much for joining me. So for this, we are going to be doing, we're going to be looking at the first six months of 2019, so January through June, and we're just going to get a general overview of what these uh, these six months can bring for you into your life. So please keep in mind that is that this is a general reading, okay? So please take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. If you would like a more personal look into your six months, the first six months of 2019, or uh, whenever you're watching this, if you just want a, a forecast or an overview into what could be coming up for you, these readings are available for personal consumption. Um, I can do six months or I could do three months if you like. Uh, whichever works best for you. Yes? So for this reading, I'm going to be using the major arcana of the Dreams of Gaia Tarot, okay? And I will be using the book a little bit for some of this because this deck is fairly new to me, even though I've had it for some time, I really haven't been working with it. But then I'm going to take some oracle guidance from the, no, not the oracle guidance, excuse me, some clarification from the uh, Crystal Visions Tarot deck, the, a traditional tarot deck. Yes? All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Scorpios, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. Please give us an accurate representation of the first months of 2019, January through June for Scorpio. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Scorpio, let's have a look here. Let's have a look, see. So first six months, January through June. So starting with January, let's see what we've got for you, Scorpio. January, oh, we've got integrity. Ah, that's a great way to be starting the year. February, okay, the maiden. March, oops. Okay, let's get March here for you, for Scorpio. March of 2019, let's see what we have here for you. Thought, okay. Interesting, May. For Scorpio, May, we have, oh, did something flip? Yes, it did. Death and rebirth, look at that, okay. June, wait, I'm sorry. That was April, okay. <laughs> All right, wait, 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 wait. Let's let's look at this again. January, February, March, April. Sorry, guys, April. So now we're looking for May. <laughs> May. Sorry about that, guys. May for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Oops, here we go. May, Destiny, and June. June, Scorpio, 2019. What have we got for you, Scorpio? June. June for you, Scorpio. June of 2019. Oh, boy. All right. The Father. Okie dokie. So, looking over this now. So you're starting off with your year with some integrity. I really feel like a lot of you, um, there's been a lot of major transformation and change going on for just about everybody, okay? That is the, the energy that we're in currently. Uh, so you're starting your year off with a focus of integrity here in January, okay? And then as you move through the rest of your year, obviously the first, the, uh, at least the rest of these six months, Obviously, the focus that you have in integrity is going to carry out through, carry on throughout the year. And it's looking like by June, you're going to be very much in a stronger place of integrity, uh, a stronger place of control over your life. I do see the father in this deck as uh, the emperor in like the traditional tarot. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with some clarification here. Starting with January, we do have integrity. I would like to read a little bit from the book here for you. This is card number 23. Here we go. Integrity. Key words. 
integrity, honesty, honor, character, values, morality, sincerity, consistency, principles, fairness. Key phrases, act with honesty and honor. Walk your talk. Everyone deserves a second chance. Oppos uh, excuse me, oppose hypocrisy, dishonesty, cruelty, and injustice. Practical, ethical, and honest behavior. I'm sorry, practice ethical and honest behavior. Do not play favorites. Be the best, per be the best person you can be. Do it for love, not for profit. Keep your promises. Do not betray a trust. Avoid gossip and speaking ill of others. Do not cheat or take the easy way. Do not allow injustice or cruelty towards innocence. Behavior and actions influence reputation. We all live in glass houses, so avoid judging. This is uh, this is major for you. And if we're looking, if we're like thinking about um, your past year, okay, just uh, and and just from the readings that I've been doing for Scorpio over the past year, every month. It's just been a really tumultuous year and I'm not allowed. This has only been the first year that I've been, you know, I've had this channel and I've been doing these monthly readings. So I don't know what other years have been like for Scorpios out there, but at least for the Scorpios that I've been channeling for, um, things have been pretty intense. There's been a lot of challenging experiences, a lot of challenging circumstances. Um, and it's almost as if this whole past year has been has been leading you on a path towards standing in your own greater authenticity, but also integrity. So it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty awesome to see that this card comes out, you know, for the first of the year in 2019 for you. But it's also really not surprising. And it's really, in my opinion, it's really quite perfect. At least it just feels quite perfect. You know what I mean? For your energies. So let's get some clarification. Um, this, I mean, I, 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 I feel, this feels right. This definitely feels right for you. Uh, it's just, it's, I, I have a feeling around it. I just don't know really how to put it into words. So let's get some clarification on this, please, Spirit, for January, for Scorpio. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, we have the Three of Pentacles so far that has flipped over. And, okay, there we go. One more. All right, all right. So we have the Three of Pentacles that flipped over first. And with that, I'm hearing self-mastery. This is a card of entrepreneurship. So some of you may be in a process of going, of moving into your own line of work here. Um, and especially with keeping an integrity, I feel like for some of you, you may have been in jobs or business situations um, for monetary gain period like that's really the only reason why you're in maybe involved in some of these situations or you have a strong focus in money you know you 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 you're really just focused on money and that's about it and here with integrity um you're starting to realize that if you're in it just for money it's not something that's really going to benefit you, okay? Underneath the deck, though, you do have the Six of Wands. I just want to point that out. So this is definitely a winning situation for you. Um, standing in your own integrity is, al is always, always a great way to win because you win when you are true to yourself, when you are authentic, okay? So there's definitely some energies of uh, self-mastery that is going on here. Three of Pentacles is a card, the message of the card, in my opinion, can lead to self-mastery. And that's literally what I heard when the, when I was channeling from the card, all right? Um, building yourself up through greater integrity, which is beautiful. You have the Page of Wands, yep. And you have the, hey, look at that, the Nine of Pentacles. And the Nine of Pentacles to me is very much a card of integrity in, in and of itself in the Tarot. And that's, I, you know what I mean? And so here we have the Page of Wands. The Page of Wands is creativity, is inspiration, is wanting to go in a different path or inspired towards moving on into a different path. With the Nine of Pentacles, some of you may be leaving a relationship. That is something that I'm hearing here for you. Um, this is the Nine of Pentacles is the card of singlehood of the bachelor or the bachelorette, um, but it's also a card of rewards for hard work d uh, uh, well done, okay? Um, and I really feel like for many of you, 2018 was like full of 
like nothing but nonstop le lessons and many of you have really tackled it okay hard work well done and which is going to be rewarded with the six of wands here all right which is so that's really quite beautiful so you it's almost as if you're graduating um, in this month of January or like as you enter into this new year you're graduating you're elevating you are stepping up though and that's for those of you that have, that have really been doing the work for those of you that have kind of been shying away from the work um, you can't really escape this and it's not something that I'm trying to make you afraid of I'm not trying to put inject any sort of fear into the situation but it's you can't escape it but that is actually giving you an opportunity. So for those of you who maybe have, maybe are looking back and are wishing you kind of had done the work or you had responded differently to the circumstances in your life, you are being presented another chance or a new opportunity by the universe starting this year, okay? Starting with your own personal integrity. That's the very jump of the year. So that's that's really good. For others of you, it might be a little bit of a warning that you're gonna have to face things that you decided not to look at in the past, okay? So next we get to uh, February, and this is the Maiden. Now the Maiden is, um, an en is, a fem is a feminine energy. It's a youthful feminine energy. It's, uh, it's, it's about self-expression, self-exploration, um, being a little bit selfish, but this is only because you're, you're, you're nurturing yourself in ways that you really need to, in ways that... Um, you know, people in society cannot really tell you what to do about it. This is about sexuality also, exploring your sexuality, exploring your sensuality. Um, and uh, this is, it's also about fertility too, uh, abundance even. This is like the initial step into connecting with the abundance of the divine feminine. Um, so many of you with this new sense of integrity are going to be exploring yourself even more. And we have the Ace of Swords here so far. We also have the Two of Cup, Pentacles and the Hermit, okay? So like I said, this is a card of, and underneath the deck is the Chariot. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, um, I really feel like for some of you, this this uh, the energy of integrity, well, for a lot of you, the energy of integrity is really going to be flowing throughout this whole year, okay? Um, so you get your first, first taste of it in January. By February, now you start to use that, ener that energies of integrity to explore yourself. The Hermit and the Ace of Swords, all right? This is where I really feel like, um, and this actually really could be... I'm picking up that for some of you, this really could be accelerated or the energies of this could be accentuated even by working with your own personal sexuality, uh, working with your own sexual creative energies, you know, exploring your sexuality, exploring your sensuality, using that to open up higher centers, uh, uh, break through blockages, that kind of thing here. But there really is an energy of getting to know yourself on a much deeper level with the Hermit and the Ace of Swords. Two of Pentacles is to me, bringing those energies of yourself into balance, those Op opposing sides, masculine and feminine, light, dark, that kind of thing. Bringing them into balance in the physical corporeal world. Bringing them into balance in your, um, in, within, within yourself. And through that, bringing, getting that, learning about yourself and achieving and even maintaining that balance allows you to move forward. Now this is, yes, you can say that this is moving forward um, you know, towards what your heart's desires are. But what I'm really getting with the chariot, it's, it's, it's not even really about that. It's just about finally being free to move forward in ways that you may not, may not have been able to move forward in the past because of blockages, because of, um, toxic habits, um, toxic behaviors, uh, uh, negative self-beliefs, destructive beliefs, destructive patterns. I, I, and this is so crazy because it's 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 different than the traditional, you know, uh, way of exploring yourself and being virtuous and blah 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 and all that bullshit. It's <laughs> I apologize if I'm triggering anybody by saying that, but at the, but it's more about learning who you are through experiencing yourself. 
not through any sort of principles that others may say you need to do it in this way or that way or blah, blah, blah. No, this is about getting down to the nitty gritty of who you are and accepting that, accepting that and loving yourself for who you are. That's what the maiden talks about here, okay? Excellent. So now, March, you have thought. And so all of this energy, all of this, you know, getting to know yourself more, you're really putting, I really feel like for March now, as you move through getting through these energies for yourself, you are able now to start putting all of this into, uh, you start, you're able to intellectualize it. Okay, you're, you're able to see yourself in a different way. And I do, I do see Scorpio as a, a highly, highly intelligent energy, uh, which tends to be their downfall because they're so intelligent. They're so also so intuitive. They tend to see the darker elements of things quicker than many others because maybe they've been through so much or because they see so much and they are un they understand as a Scorpio, you may understand the um, negativity in humanity quite intrinsically. And so you see how things progress or could go, you could say wrong, fairly quickly. But here with thought in March, you're using that intellectual ability to really put things into perspective for yourself, okay? Especially with what you may have learned or come to terms with in January and February. We have the Wheel of Fortune here that has just jumped out. And it came out, it fell in the reverse here. And what I'm, what I'm, getting, I, I'm getting here is that, especially looking forward into the next month of April with death and rebirth here, the Wheel of Fortune in reverse is saying two things to me. One, it's saying that you're putting old cycles, negative habits, and all that stuff to rest. Okay, it's like you're starting to get well, actually, it's saying two things, but they, they really are um, the same thing. You're starting to put things to rest. You're starting to change the cycles for yourself. And the Wheel of Fortune is coming out in reverse because then it's not really probably going to actually change until or at least start changing until the next month where you have death and rebirth here. Okay, so. Um, Let's see what we have here. One more card. Okay. Five of Wands in reverse. Excellent. Justice. Fantastic. Seven of Cups. All right, Spirit. One more card here, please. For, whoa. Okay, we have two more cards. Wow. All right. Un hey, now, underneath the deck is the Six of Wands yet again. So, what is all of this say? First of all, chaos and confusion is being put to the wayside, five of wands. And I feel like for some of you, you might have been that shit starter. That, and now this is not the official shit starter card, but you may have been the pot stirrer, which is not so bad. It's chaotic, don't get me wrong, but it's not as destructive as say the five of swords energy, which is the shit starter card. With the five of wands in reverse, I really feel like for some of you, you're putting down this you're putting down this propensity towards stirring the pot for shits and giggles, stirring the pot because you like to see, because you, in some, in a little bit of a sick or sadistic way, you enjoy watching people um, fumble through the chaos. And I'm not going to say it's more mischievous than it is bad or, or evil is that's kind of the energy that I'm getting from it. But that energy is putting to being put to the wayside because you're starting to see how it actually turns out to be a little more detrimental than you had wanted it to be. You have justice. OK, which is excellent. This is. Um, especially in terms of thought this is putting everything into perspective light dark good bad black white masculine feminine blah 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 putting all of that into perspective which is allowing you to uh bring justice into your life here you have the seven of cups also um the seven of cups feels like a, a good thing to me it's opening up avenues of expression for yourself it's, I, I really see it as opening doors for you that may have been closed because of this propensity towards stirring the pot and, and kind of causing trouble for people. It's like a karmic situation. You're, you're, you're closing yourself off from 
potential beneficial opportunities or change in opportunities change from the same old same old here with the wheel of fortune which is in reverse change oh, you're, you're, you're by letting go of this um, pot stirrer energy you are actively changing your 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 karma and opening up new doors for you with the seven of cups then you also have judgment and the lovers some of you could be changing up your situation so that you're pulling in a potential mate could absolutely be that um, but also the lovers is about a cho about a choice but to me it's also about the the, the balance of masculine and feminine energies within it could it, it symbolizes Gemini energy Justice symbolizes um, a Libra energy. Um, but what I'm getting here, this is really not about like pulling in a soulmate. I mean, obviously it could mean that. And for some of you, it does mean that because you're actively changing your karma. Um, but to me, this is more about the overall lesson of choice. Which choice would be best for you? Which choice is going to um, keep your karma flowing in a positive way rather than racking up more negative karma for yourself? But also, this is a choice of about, yes, typically my, de my typical definition of choosing vice over virtue, which is um, choosing to honor yourself rather than uh, honor others in the process uh, in instead. But also, this is about the balance between masculine and feminine energy within that leads to a resurrection with judgment a rebirth okay so that's pretty that's pretty awesome scorpio so now we get into april and we have the actual death and rebirth now this is a lot about this is you know your energy you could see this as um the death card within the traditional tarot the major arcana of the traditional tarot which happens to be your card um but this is about change, changing of the cycles, um, gestation, allowing something to come to fruition, uh, releasing your expectations towards anything, timing, um, a person, place, or thing, uh, a certain way something is going to look. You're allowing something to grow and manifest into something that it truly is instead of trying to make it into something that it's not. We have the King of Swords. Absolutely. And I really see this for you, Scorpio. I see this as... Um, you being as objective as possible you do have the ten of cups here and you also have the knight of swords interesting i'm going to pull one more card here for you but this is you really taking a step back and looking at yourself looking at your life looking at your experiences with uh, with objectivity and saying to yourself all right it's time to cut the shit. what really serves me and what doesn't there we go okay and wow Holy moly, underneath the deck, you've got the Ten of Swords. I mean, this is pretty, pretty fucking perfect here. So, and this is going along, absolutely along with what I'm saying here. Um, you have a lot of energy, uh, I'm sorry, air energy, first of all. There are some of you that may have some pretty strong air placements in your chart. I would recommend that you check those out also. Um, if you do, check out those videos. Some of you really could be dealing with an air sign. Maybe you were in a relationship with an air sign, whether that be romantic, friendship, business, whatever, it doesn't matter, okay? But if that resonates with you, you know, put that into context. But you have Libra energy, no, I'm sorry, you have Aquarius energy here with the King of Swords, and you have Gemini energy here, again, with the Knight of Swords, potentially. Now, it doesn't have to be that. If that resonates with you, take that energy, take that and run with it. Now, for some, but others of you, though, this is the energy of, all right, cut the shit works for me and what doesn't what is helping me achieve my emotional fulfillment achieve my goals some of you have family goals others of you just want to be happier just want to be more fulfilling don't you don't want to constantly have to deal with all this bullshit now as a Scorpio not gonna lie as a Scorpio and this is my own personal opinion about what I understand about the sign you're gonna have to deal with some sort of death or transformative energy around you because that is what you represent as a scorpio whether that be sun moon rising venus whatever if you resonate if you resonate strongly with scorpio energy this is something that you have come into this life to experience so it's not even like you're going to be able to completely cut this out but it's more about bringing that into alignment and and actually uh this is 
falling along the lines of my monthly reading for December for Scorpio, I believe it was December, in which the title was, How Are You Using Your Powers of Destruction? If you never watched that video or if you're just now finding my channel um, and you have not seen that video, I recommend going to watch it. I believe it's the December monthly for Scorpio. And, but I do know... I, I do know for a fact that it is titled, How Are You Using Your Powers of Destruction? or something like that, okay? And this is absolutely where, in the month of April, um, you're actually, I really feel like you're coming to terms with that because over the past, what is it, four months from December 2018 until April now of 20, uh, four or five months, five months, because this is the fourth month, whatever. <laughs> whatever, it, it doesn't matter, but I really feel like that's coming through to yeah to fruition for you wowie wow wow look at this scorpio so you had three more cards that came out face down all right you have the nine of cups wish fulfillment here you have the hierophant and you have the sun now the hierophant can mean uh can talk about institution marriage government uh society the status quo tradition uh university going to school learning teaching something like that but here, what the, what the Hierophant is saying to me is this is, now this also represents, if it doesn't represent all of that other stuff, it, rep, it represents um, your higher self, okay? Learning from your higher self, teaching through the lessons that your higher self may have given you, or coming to into alignment or integration with your higher self. And that's what I'm seeing here, coming into alignment or integration with your higher self, which is allowing you to achieve wish fulfillment. You have you you went from the nine of cups here to the ten of cups, okay? I really feel like you're standing in this nine of cups energy, progressing towards the ten of cups, and you have the sun, illumination, everything working out just as it's supposed to, seeing things for, as they truly are, especially with this king of swords energy, um, illumination, integration, success, happiness, cheerfulness, that kind of energy. All right, so this. Uh, even though it might be a little bit daunting and then yes for you Scorpio I really feel like you're very much um, comfortable with energies of death and rebirth um, if you aren't yet you are in the process of learning it that is what this lifetime as a Scorpio energy or resonating with Scorpio energy is here to teach you but wow Okay, I haven't even started talking about Destiny, the next card yet, and I actually do want to read a little bit from the book. Uh, anyway, um, but that card, the moon, came out. So anyway, you, I really feel like um, death and rebirth energies are really nothing no foreign to you, so this really could be a much easier transition than it may sound on the surface, okay? So now, we're moving into May, and we have Destiny, and I do want to... What's cool about this is Destiny is like the lead image for this for this uh, deck here. But I do want to read a little bit about this from the book for you. This is card number 16. Destiny. Keywords, personal destiny, universal destiny, seeking answers, purpose, conquest. Key phrases, your destiny is to become whole and connected. Your destiny is to lead a life with meaning and purpose. Step inside and explore heart and mind. Discover your gifts and talents, a sense of purpose and confidence. Ancestral healing may be required. Break the chain. Remember your dreams. What are your strengths and weaknesses? Sometimes the most important destiny remains hidden. Your destiny may influence generations to come. Overcome the trials and obstacles. So I really feel like for many of you, you're in the, especially with this, what's leading up to the death and rebirth, um, energies for you in the previous month of April, you are leading up to getting, falling into alignment with your true destiny. And that really may be something that you, that you were hiding from, or maybe was hidden from you. Um, there is definitely a strong ancestral energy coming through here. And I feel like a lot of your ancestors will be helping you find what your destiny is. But also, now this is all I mean, coming through with the moon here, but also what the moon is stating is that in relation to your true destiny, some of you may actively go through what is understood as the dark night of the soul situation. And to me, uh, what that is saying is and um, what I can, oh, wow, look at that. Yep. What I'm getting from that is, I'm going to leave it there, and we have High Priestess underneath the deck. Yes. So um, 
you could be going through a dark night of the soul situation or what it might feel like that because you're finally integrating with your destiny. You could be coming to terms with ways that you may have been cheating yourself um, by shirking your responsibilities potentially for some of you is the energy that I'm getting. Um, maybe hiding or running away from your true destiny, not being honest with yourself about what you're really meant to be doing here. And what the high priestess is here saying to me is speaking to um, destiny revealed, secrets being revealed, okay? Maybe getting in tune with your higher self, learning uh, greater in tune with your uh, psychic abilities and things like that. Here, here you are, death. Okay, you have the Ace of Swords again, and you also have the Six of Cups. So this is definitely talking about destiny, maybe ancestral destiny, maybe something that you really wanted to do as a child. Um, this could be uh, being nostalgic about the past and understanding ways that you have maybe been cheating or lying to yourself about what it is you're truly meant to, meant to do here. And with the Death card, especially associated with destiny, I see you really stepping into who you a greater expression of who you truly are i mean you had the death and rebirth in april now in may you're getting the actual death card from the from the traditional tarot and that's i mean that couldn't be any more perfect couldn't be any more poignant um so the moon is also talking about fear here. And I feel like some of you may really have been fearful of what it is you're truly meant to do here on Earth um, because it, it really could be pretty catastrophic, not for you, but for the people around you. And I feel like some of you just really did not want to upset the balance, upset the status quo. But as Scorpio energies, that's kind of what I'm picking up here is that's kind of part of why you're here to begin with, to upset what's the, the true balance or what has been in balance because ultimately when you look, take a bigger look at it, it's really been an imbalance, okay? If that makes any sense. And what the high, I'm looking at the high priestess here and she's saying to me, true secrets are meant to be revealed. The truth is meant to be out there. And as Scorpios uh, or energies or individuals that resonate well with Scorpio energy, you really have a power, uh, an ability to really use your destructive energies, which really can be looked at as creative energies, to be quite honest. But you have the power to use those energies to destroy that which holds people back from being their true and authentic selves. But yeah, look at that. Nine of Pentacles just came out again. It's like you're, you, you stand alone. You are set and, and endowed with this power to help people live with what? Greater integrity. I really feel like this is a central theme for your whole year, Scorpio, all right? So then finally here we have June and that is the father. And to me, this is very much an emperor energy. This is the leader. This is the patriarch. This it, it's very much a leader energy. That's that's what I'm getting here. Um, sitting on your throne, knowing exactly who you are, master of your domain, leading by example is a big thing that I'm getting here. And what is that example? Integrity. I mean, the father is the the epitome of integrity. And I really feel like by the time you get to June, Scorpio, you're going to have a greater understanding of what integrity truly is and how to live from a greater sense of integrity and also author uh, uh, autonomy, authority, and um, authenticity. That was the word I was looking for, authenticity. All right. So let's get one more shuffle here uh, for you, Scorpio, and we're going to get uh, some clarification for the father here for your month of June. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay. We got some, woo! We've got the Queen of Wands here. The Four of Cups. Okay. And then something flipped over. Let's see. What is that? That flipped over here. Give me just a second. Give me just a second. Give me just a second. Or I thought something flipped over. Maybe it didn't. Hmm. All right. Well, let's talk about what we have here so far. And then I'll look at that. Underneath the deck is the Knight of Cups. Okay. And that energy is incredibly compassionate. That's what I'm feeling for that right now. You have 
Whoa. You have the Four of Cups, the Queen of Wands, and you have Judgment in Reverse. Judgment in Reverse, let's start with that. That's speaking to understanding where um, false judgments have been made or, judge, or, or um, unfair judgments have been made upon yourself or, and by yourself. So I really get an energy that some of you may be looking back um, by this point in the year, okay, nothing else flipped over. By this point in the year, some of you are looking back at the energies uh, and the things you may have experienced and understood how maybe people have falsely judged you or you in turn have falsely judged others. And there is definitely an energy of wanting to rectify that with this Knight of Cups energy. That doesn't mean that you're going to actually, you know, reconcile with people or anything. Um, but... Uh, changing your energy, especially as being in this father figure energy here, this emperor type energy, changing the way you approach situations, especially with this four of cups, all right? And then the four of cups here is talking about analyzing, questioning things, um, and focusing on your your cup of love instead of, uh, your, your ace of cups instead of the three of cups behind you. Um, analyzing and questioning how you have shown up in the world, Queen of Wands. Queen of Wands is uh, Aries energy. Um, and actually, if you're talking about, if you know, with the father here resembling the emperor, the emperor is a card of Aries too. So this is cardinal energy. This is taking control. This is taking the reins and moving forward in your life in a much better way. Now, I feel like also with judgment in reverse, um, there is a blockage towards a new transformation but i don't think it's a real blockage i feel like this is something else that's coming up down the down the road in the rest of the year at some point in the in the rest of the year maybe like two to three months after june um there could be some sort of transformation a new transformation that happens again keep in mind guys we are constantly transforming okay we don't ever stop transforming so the thought of another if the thought of another transformation kind of like scares you or whatnot don't worry about it because you're we're always transforming but i feel like you're being set up for another form of resurrection a new transformation later on down the road with judgment in reverse. It's not a bad thing It's that it's in reverse. It's just that it's not quite, the energies aren't quite ready yet. It's like you're setting yourself up for it. So that's definitely why you could have this reflective type energy with the Four of Cups. How are you using your energies wisely? All right, Scorpio. So there it is. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you would like a look into your own personal forecast, whether that be three months, six months down the road, at any point throughout the year, please don't hesitate to go ahead and send me an email. With that said, I wish you all a very fantastic 2019, and I look forward to connecting with you again very soon. Take care. Bye.